implementing room components you are in section 4 video 2 and in this video we will learn about setting up the demo application for room we will add various dependencies and all we will see what are the components of room and then we will add the components of room in our demo application and get started to use room database for our android app so let us first see what are the components of room the first one is entity now entity defines the schema of the database table each table is represented by the entity it has the getter and setter functions for fields of the database and it is annotated with the representation entity the second component is DAO or also known as data assess object it contains the method to assess the database that is it provides an API for reading and writing data into the database it is an interface and it is annotated with DAO the third entity for room is the database it is the database holder class and serves as the main access point for the underlying connection of our apps persistent and relational data and it is annotated with database so now let us move to Android studio and add these components into our project so here I have created a new Android application and this is my apps build.gradle file in this file I have added the lifecycle dependencies for which the version for me is 1.1.1 we had already seen this in our previous videos this version for you may vary in case if you are watching this in future now after the lifecycle dependencies I have added the dependencies for room this dependencies will give me the access to use the room persistent library for me the current version is 1.1.1 which may vary for you now after adding these dependencies sync your gradle and you'll be ready to get started with room now I'll close this let me show you the changes that I have made this project is made out of the basic activity and here in my activity main.xml file for the floating action button I have changed the icon for IC input add we will use this button to insert data into our database after this I have added a new class of node view model which extends Android view model in the previous videos we saw this view model class extended view model we are using Android view model so that we can get the application context in my node view model I have defined a string tag which I'll use for the log cat and here this is the constructor for my node view model in which the application is passed I have overridden the on cleared method in my main activity I have created a string tag and defined a variable for node view model this is my code for floating action button and here I have initialized the node view model by using view model providers which I have explained already in the previous videos so now for components of room the first component we will add is the entity so here in my Java folder I'll create a new class and I'll name this as note this will be my entity class hitting ok now the note class is created to change it into an entity I just need to use the annotation of entity from android.arc.persistent.room library so I'll do this and here we have created the entity for our room database now within the entity annotation I'll define the table name if you don't define this property by default the room will use the class name as the database table name so here if you want to customize your table name you need to mention it with the property of table name so here I'll give my table name as notes in the upcoming videos we will add the fields to this table of ours after entity we will create DAO which is the data SS object and is an important component of room so here I'll add a new file which will be an interface 
and I'll name it note DAO. So here this is the interface for DAO and I can convert it to DAO just by the annotation of DAO. So now we have created the DAO for our Roam persistent library. Here we will define the various SQL queries in form of functions which we will use to perform various CURD operations for our Roam database. After DAO, we will add the database class which will be our database holder. So creating a new Java class and name it node room database and it will be class and this class will extend room database. Now the requirement for the database class for room is that it needs to be abstract. So we will create the abstract class hitting OK. So we have our database class created and we need to use the annotation of database. This database class has to include the list of entities associated with it. So within the annotation, we will write the list of entities. My entities will be the one which I have created just now. Node.class for us. And here we still have some error. It says version missing though required. So we will add the version for our database which will help us in keeping track of the changes in the schema that we make in our database which we will look into in the later videos. Now after adding the entities in our database annotation we need to add the list of database SS object that we will use. So here for us our database object will be and after defining all this we will create the instance of the database. Now here there is another thing we need to take care of that we should have just a single instance of database and to ensure that our database class should be singleton. So this is the code for creating the singleton object of our room database. I have created a static variable which I'll use for creating the instance for our room database. And then I have created another static function get database which will return the instance of our database. Now it will first check if note room instance is null. If it is null the instance of room database is created. Here the instance of note room database and we are using the function room.database builder in which we are passing the context of the application, the context of the class the name of the database and then we are building our database. So here if the instance of the database does not already exist a new one will be created as the existing one will be returned. We have successfully added the components of room in our demo application. We have added the entity, the DAO and the room database. Just summarizing the requirement for the database class which is important the database class has to be annotated with at the rate database annotation. It should be an abstract class that extends room database and then include the list of entities associated with the database. Now it has to have abstract method for each DAO that is related to it. After relating the entities and DAO to the database class, we will create the instance of the room database by using the function room.databaseBuilder and keep in mind it has to be singleton. Now let us understand how these components of room work in relation with our application. Here let's say this is my Android application and this is my Android activity and this is my room database. Now as the components of room we have the data SS object and the entities and here is the SQLite database. So our Android application uses DAO to interact with the database. Now our Android application uses database SS object to perform the DB related operations. This includes getting the entities from the DB or persisting the changes back to the database. Whereas our application uses the entities to get or set the field values. So this way the components of room are related with our application. In the next video, 
we will implement the functionality of inserting data into Room. So stay tuned.